Okay. Okay. So this morning we're going to go through our series again. We have talked about the manner of his birth, the timing of his birth, and this morning we're going to discuss the effects of his birth. Now I'm not going to go through all the effects of how of, of his birth, but we're going to start with the first few people who met Jesus, and how were they affected? What can we see take place? Now you know that the the story of his birth. There's actually only a few main characters. Can I ask for my little clicker thing? Yeah, what do you call that? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we're going to look at the few. There's a few like five main characters or main stories around the birth of Jesus. Those who came and were a part of it, and those who knew, who who saw and recognized something about Jesus. Obviously, there was many people around him as a baby, but not everyone recognized, understood who he was. Now, Mary and Joseph. Of course, we start with Mary and Joseph.、Um, today, I'm not going to be going into that so much. We know the angel came and spoke to them、uh, when when Mary was to become pregnant with Jesus. I'm not going to touch on that part of the story. I'm going to touch more on those after the birth. Okay. Now we have the very first ones who were invited to the party was the shepherds. Okay. We have the shepherds, then the wise men who came, who saw the star and came to find him. The wise men told King Herod. He was also made aware. He never came and met Jesus, but was aware of who he was. And finally, we have Simeon and Anna, who were at the day or at the temple the day that he was brought in. Okay, so we we are going to go through just a few of these. I don't have time to go through fully all five, but I do hope this morning we're going to catch and see the moment that they met and realized who Jesus was. Something took place. Now we're going to start with the shepherds. All right, we're going to start with the shepherds. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Now, notice what the angel said. But the angel said to them, "Do not be afraid. I bring you good news." Amen. Who believes that hearing about Jesus is good news? Amen. We have the gospel. We have good news. Now, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Now, I'm so happy today that in church we feel joy. Like, did anyone feel really happy this morning? You're in church. Like, it's so good to gather and and praise Jesus. We're dancing around and having fun. You know what? I was reminded this week as I was studying these passages that. Do you know Christians should be the happiest people in the world? Do you believe that? Like we should be. The good news should bring great joy for all people. Like I really believe that Christians, we should be the happiest people in the world. And maybe not because we have everything, but because we have Jesus. It's not about what's happening in our life, but like we have Jesus. The angel promised this. He said there would be great joy. Now, if you know what happened, the shepherds, after they heard what the angel said, they were told where they find Jesus. They hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. They found Jesus. Now, did you ever notice we usually stop at that part of the story? Okay, they saw Jesus. It was just like the angel said. Now, when they had seen him, this is interesting. They spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Did you ever know that when the shepherds saw Jesus, they didn't just immediately go back to the hill and like, "Whoa, we saw Jesus." They actually went around. They couldn't contain the joy. They couldn't contain the good news. They couldn't contain what they'd seen. They went around sharing it to people. And everyone was amazed, and they didn't just stop there. You know, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Do you know the first effect we can see? The first people who saw Jesus, who was revealed to them who Jesus was. You know the effect? They immediately became witnesses and glorified God. Do you know there was an immediate effect? They were immediately joyful. They were immediately so happy and excited. They ran around telling everyone else. Do you know, church? I believe that happens. Have you seen someone who, when they first get saved, what is the natural effect? When people first meet Jesus, they want to go tell someone. It is such good news. 
Amen. It is so amazing. There's joy. There's wanting to glorify God. They saw something. It affected them. There was an effect that they immediately went from shepherds to being the first witnesses. They immediately went around telling people what took place. Now, I don't know, church, if you've ever thought about this, but do you know they were the only group invited to the birth? Did you ever think about that? The wise men kind of invited themselves, okay? I mean, there was a star, but it wasn't like so. The only ones who had an angel and invited them to come and see Jesus born was this group of shepherds. I think that's incredible. Like of all the people in the universe, in Jerusalem, that could have been chosen to come and see Jesus, God decided to choose a bunch of shepherds. I think for me, this whole, like if we talk about the whole manner of his birth, the timing of his birth, the effects of his birth, we really see how God thinks differently than we do. How he ordains and chooses and calls and asks the people to be a part who would oft, so often be looked aside, who would so often be looked over, who would so often be considered a nobody. He said, these are the kind of people I choose to come and see. For them, it was revealed who Jesus was, and they went out and immediately were witnesses and glorified God. I believe that the more and more Jesus is revealed to us, the more we will not be able to stay silent. The joy in our hearts will be so great, it's going to come bursting out of us. Amen, church? I, I believe that the more we see who Jesus is, when we get a touch and experience of Jesus, we are going to want to share it with someone and glorify Him. Amen? This is part of the effect of Jesus being revealed. If you agree, shout out, amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, this is the first group, the shepherds. Now, after the, the shepherds, as he's gone on to the wise men. Now, it says that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Megai from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now they come and they ask King Herod. Okay, they come and they say, we've seen the star. We are coming to worship Jesus. Now this is interesting. It says when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. I never noticed this verse before in the Bible. Now, the shepherds, when they heard the news of Jesus, their response was, let's go, let's find him. And they, they worshipped him and they glorified God. King Herod, when he heard this news, was so disturbed. And it says that all of Jerusalem with him. This means there was a lot of people hearing this news. And Herod calls in. He calls in the pride priests. He calls in those who know the prophecies. And he asks them, where is this supposed to happen? And he figures out, it is true. This is really happening. Something is happening. So he asked the wise men, when you find him, tell me so that he lies, I can go and worship him too. But they are warned in a dream to not go back to him. We know the story, right? So they don't tell Herod. Herod then is sitting there realizing he doesn't know where is this baby who is born? Where is this king? Now, when he realized that he had been outwitted, okay, the wise men didn't come back and tell him. He realizes what they've done. He was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under. Can you imagine what he's willing to do to his people? To stop, to try to destroy and take away this future king. He's willing to go to any ends. These are like, can you imagine how furious and angry he is to commit this kind of act? But you know what we know is that an angel came and warned Joseph, and they flee and they go to Egypt. Obviously, uh, Jesus is not going to be killed, you know, as a, as a child, as a baby. But I thought this is very interesting. When they go to Egypt, it says, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Now, today we're mostly going to be looking at the good effects. Okay, when you realize who Jesus is, that, that you become a witness, you glorify God. Wow, you want to share the good news. But the other effect is that sometimes when the enemy realizes 
the potential of Jesus, the enemy didn't want to become a witness or glorify God. It did the opposite. The enemy wanted to put a stop to it. But church, I was so encouraged when I read this that the enemy tried to stop it, but the more King Herod tried to stop it, the more he only succeeded in fulfilling prophecies. The more he tried to want to kill Jesus, the more that the family left and flew to Egypt, the more prophecies were fulfilled and God's plan was fulfilled. Church, I want to declare over you today, as this morning we talk about Jesus being revealed and seeing the potential and coming out and revealing what is happening. Maybe the enemy sometimes wants to stop you when it sees things happening in your life, the calling of God revealed, the gifts of God revealed, Jesus being revealed to you. But I wanna tell you this, we never have to worry about that. Because no matter what the enemy is trying to stop in your life, there is no power. We have the Almighty One. The enemy is defeated. And no matter what he does, there's a promise that says, God is working in all things to bring it out for our good. It means the more the enemy tries to stop you, the more God's plans will be fulfilled in your life. If you believe it, you say amen. amen. Say it louder, say amen. amen. Do you know he tried to stop Jesus so many times? At the cross, we see the enemy was trying to stop Jesus, but even the effect of his birth, he was trying to stop Jesus. The more he tried to stop it, the greater good came out for us. And we can see that so clearly in the cross. When he tried, he thought he could kill Jesus. He had no idea. Jesus was becoming the perfect sacrifice for us. He would rise again and once and for all bring us victory for all time. Church, I hope you grab this today. That in the Christmas story, we can see there is, there is something awful that is also happening. Behind all the people rejoicing and witnessing and the joy, there's also the enemy behind the scenes. But he cannot succeed. He cannot succeed. Every plan, it looks like he's succeeding, is actually only furthering God's plans to become a reality. Oh, isn't God good? Aren't you glad you have Jesus on your side? Amen? Aren't you glad that you have Jesus? So this is the effect of his birth. It is actually throwing a king into a fury. It is actually throwing a whole city being disturbed by the news. There are so many things going on. And after Jesus is born... And Mary goes through her time waiting. They actually come into the temple where is another group of people will see Jesus. So when the time for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph, Joseph and Mary took him, this is Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now I want us to be very clear here. In these few verses, it says over and over again, they were doing this according to the law, according to the law, according to the law. You know, it says that Jesus came to fulfill the law for us. And from the very beginning, from the very beginning, he was doing everything required. His parents were doing everything required. And they came to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. So they came in to bring this offering. Now, I want to stop here because so many times, you know, people say, uh, Joseph and Mary, you know, Jesus was born into a poor family. And then people say, how do we know they were really born into a poor family? H how, do, how do we really know? Because the actual mention, if we go back into Leviticus 12, the first law actually didn't ask for doves or pigeons. That was put in as a, like, a secondary portion. Let's look at it. It says, actually, she, the woman who has given birth, is to bring a year-old lamb. But if she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons. Now, church, I, I was thinking about this. Does this mean that Mary could not afford a lamb? Mary could only afford what is the lesser amount. You know, God is so good. He was asking for a sacrifice, but he realized that people could not afford. He gave them another option. And Mary comes in bringing, it, it looks like she's bringing the two doves or the two young pigeons and not a lamb. But you know, the more I thought about this, the more it also gave me significance, church. Or is it because, possibly, maybe she couldn't afford it. I think that's probably right. 
But Mary did not to need to carry in a lamb that day because in her arms, she was bringing in the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That she did not have to bring in a lamb to sacrifice that day because in her arms was the real lamb of God who would die one time for all of us. Amen. Isn't God good? Can we just stop and give praise to Jesus? But do I think that they were poor? I think so. It's mentioned so many times that Jesus was just the son of a carpenter, that he was just from, you know, they go from, from Nazareth. I really think that he did come in as a baby part of a poor, normal family. You know, many historians believe that Mary was such a young woman at the time. You know, coming in in these simple two young people. You know, here they are holding a baby. Everyone looks at them like they're just normal. Everyone passes them by. And here she is bringing in what she knows what has been spoken to her will be the savior of the world. And you know, everyone else is looking by, looking by, looking by, not even taking notice. Ah, this is just a poor family. They're not even bringing in a lamb. They're just bringing in, you know, the pigeons or the doves. But then there was someone. There was actually two people, but we're going to look at the first one. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. Now, notice church, the Holy Spirit was on him. Do you know that it's been so long of a time that God has not really been speaking through the prophets and speaking so clearly? It has been such a time of them waiting. And here is this man who, if he wasn't in this passage, we may have never heard about. But it says the Holy Spirit was on him and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So he's old, okay? He's basically hanging on for the day when will I see the Messiah? And you know, I'm thinking right in his imagination, how do you think the Messiah would come? I don't know how you all imagine, right? But if I had imagined the Messiah coming, I mean, you imagine you're waiting for all time, the Messiah. I mean, in my human understanding, in my, in my thinking, right? I would probably picture like, him coming down from heaven, you know? Is he like with, with, I don't know, on a chariot or on a throne, you know, surrounded by angels, you know, riding a cloud, you know, maybe throwing down lightning bolts, okay? I don't know what you picture in your mind, right? But like, I mean, when you think of the Messiah, the Savior of the world coming, we may think in such a glorious, majestic, powerful way, and instead, when Simeon sees, what does he see? He sees a baby. But I love that it's so planned. You know, he, he's waiting for this day. And it says he was moved by the Spirit. And he went into the temple courts. I, I want to stop right here and say, church, if we're talking today about Jesus being revealed. And I want to encourage us in this Christmas season... I mean, I, I, I started thinking today about all that I have to do in the next week. Did anyone else feel a little bit stressed today when you realize that Christmas is one week away? Okay, I saw the stack of Christmas cards I have not yet writing. You know, apologies in advance. Okay, you're all not getting Christmas cards this year. No, okay. Okay, I saw, you know, I saw the list of things to do today and I felt a little bit stressed. And isn't it funny that sometimes when Christmas comes, we are so busy celebrating Christmas that sometimes we don't take a moment to see Jesus revealed in Christmas. And I was encouraged by this, that Simeon is led by the Spirit. He is led to come and see Jesus at that moment, at that day. Because they weren't staying in Jerusalem. They come into Jerusalem. They come into the temple only on that day when Mary is to bring the sacrifice. And the Spirit led him there on that day and opened his eyes to see Jesus. When everyone else walked by and saw a poor family, a young family, a nobody, a crying baby like everyone else, he saw Jesus. And it is my prayer for myself and us today, church, that in this busy Christmas season, may we still take time to be led by the Spirit and see Jesus. See our beautiful, glorified Jesus. And not just be caught up in all that's happening around us. 
Amen? Yeah, will you agree with me today? Because, you know, let's not be stressed out by Christmas. Amen? Let us enjoy. You know, Simon, he took this moment. It says that when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was the custom of the law, the parents are just doing what they have to do. There's nothing like they're just following the, the regulations, the rules, the law of what they're supposed to do. But Simeon sees in this moment. I was going to say lihat. Okay, dear lihat. Okay, he sees in this moment. Okay. And he took him in his arms and praised God. And he begins to prophesy and to bless and to see Jesus for who he really is. Church, he's looking at a baby. He's looking at a helpless baby. Jesus didn't fly into the temple that day, okay? Jesus didn't come running as a baby. Jesus is only about a month old. He's carried in his mother's arms. If she doesn't give him milk, he will die. I mean, Jesus is coming in as a helpless baby. But someone with the eyes and the revelation of the Holy Spirit saw him for who he really is. You know, church, I was praying today, may we see Jesus for who he really is. And may our eyes be opened to see Jesus in others. You know, I, I, I wanted to share with you today that uh, every October, we receive a new batch of VB students. All right, you just heard about them uh, this morning in announcements. And do you know when sometimes when they come in, I interview, I interview every student before they enter the school. Do you know that sometimes when I interview a student, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good one. You know, I'm like, I see the potential. Wow. Yes, this is going to be a good one. And I remember a few years ago, there was this young, young girl. She was like 17 or 18, just graduated high school from in the village, came to the city, walked into the Bible school. I looked at her. I was like, oh, Jesus, help me. Do you know when you look at someone and you don't see, like, I just saw a scared young girl. I didn't see any potential. I was like, I have a school that is called World Impact. Like, we want people who are going to change the world. And there was this little young girl, like, I want to join. And I was like, look at me, you know, okay. I'm, I sound like a really fierce interviewer, okay, right? I was like, look at me, you know, tell me why you want to be here. I don't know, I just feel in my heart like I want to study the Bible. I was like, you know, I almost didn't accept her. You know, I looked at this girl, I almost thought like, you know what, like maybe you need to grow up a little bit, you know, maybe you can join another day. I didn't look at her and see that potential in her. I saw what was there on the outside, a shy, meek, you know, very young little girl from the village, and I did not see there was more to her than that. And one day she, she faithfully followed the school and we were in a second, second year. I was teaching them a course, I just finished now, revivalists and reformists. And I, I, I was starting to teach more revivalers, or revivalers, oh, is that a word? Okay, about those who are revivalists and reformers in history. You know, and I was getting very excited. I was teaching them about Martin Luther. As it did you know the great Martin Luther? I have read that when he was a child, when he was a, still a small child, his family at that time was very poor. And his family was so poor, he used to go to the sides of the streets and sing and beg for money. And I told him, I said, do you know that when you pass by that red light, that, that, that simpang, I can't, why is my bahasa coming out today? Okay, I don't know. I can't think of an intersection, okay? When you pass by that intersection in front of school and you see those street kids singing and begging, do you know one of them could be a future Martin Luther? This young girl caught that vision, saw the potential in others. Do you know all this time I didn't see her potential? She went out to the street corner, started staying on the street corner and winning those young people for Jesus. And church, I, I am so amazed at how many of these children and family have come to know the love of God. Can you give him praise? I messed up. I didn't see her potential. She has now been on my missions team for the last two years and almost every month is bringing someone to Jesus. She is discipling and training up 
getting those children off the street. I didn't see her potential, but I thank God he opened her eyes to see the potential in others. She went out to that street light and she saw the future Martin Luther's and she's winning them for Jesus. Do you know when, when people looked at Jesus, so many passed by, they weren't expecting that to be the savior of the world. They were looking for something big and fancy and rich and showy. And there he was, a crying baby in the arms of a poor young family. And I am so, I'm just inspired that, do you know that God is so out of what we think? Do you know that maybe where you're looking for Jesus and how you want to see Jesus is not the way he's going to reveal himself to you? Do you know the way that, that Jesus can speak to you? Sometimes we say like, Jesus, my heart is open, like, talk to me. And then someone comes and brings you correction and you're like, no, not that way, I don't want you, you know? You, you know what they've said, right? The voice of the Holy Spirit can sound a lot like the voice of your wife. Just saying, just saying, okay? Or vice versa, okay, or vice versa. My husband's not here today, so I don't have to, you know, preach on him. He's in Borneo, that's why he's in Borneo, okay, just be sure. But, but do you know that we're, we're, we, sometimes we want Jesus to speak and show himself in a certain way. Do you know he doesn't always do things the way we expect? And do you know, I was thinking like this, that, that Jesus may not be the savior you were expecting, but Jesus is the savior you need. Maybe you are like me and you're thinking if the Messiah is going to come down, he's going to come down on chariots of fire, you know, surrounded by angels and, and, you know, trumpets blazing. But instead he came as a weak, helpless baby. Why? Because he came to take our place. He came to take on human flesh and be the perfect uh, sacrifice, the perfect panganti, okay, the perfect substitute for us. He came, if he came down as a king on a throne, you know, a chariot is blazing, then how would he ever know what it's like to be us? How could he ever take the place, our place, and truly be the perfect sacrifice in our place? Some people cannot accept this. How could God possibly want to become a man and not even just any man but suffer take on pain know every trial and everything that we face how could possibly a glorious majestic mighty and powerful all-knowing God want to put himself through that I mean come on now if, if you can choose right if you can choose to not have pain, do we, all, do we all not choose to not go through pain? Okay, is why I've stopped exercising. That's a bad thing, okay, that's a bad thing, right? You know that when you're, when you're exercising and you're starting to feel the pain, you, you can stop, sometimes we stop. I mean, if, you were, if I was ever being tortured, I'd be so bad, I'd give up the answer right away, okay? okay? Never torture me, I'm sure after like one little prick of something, ah, I can't, I don't, I'd want to stop the pain. But isn't it incredible? what Jesus was willing to go through for us, even to be born as a baby in this poor, simple family. You know, Jesus didn't start his ministry for many, many years. After this, the next story is when he's 12 years old. Do you know what that tells me? He lived a pretty normal childhood. Nothing after this prophetic experience it goes on that he just grows up. Can you imagine for years and years and years, he just acts like a normal child and grows up under his parents? To me, that actually blows my mind. And you know what? Maybe Jesus is not what you were expecting, but he is exactly what you needed. And so many people are looking around at this baby and going, no, 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 no. They heard, but I think so many people could not accept. This, this baby in this poor little family is the, is the king, is the Messiah? Mm, I don't think so. But, but Simeon saw it. And I pray more and more that we would not look at circumstances, not look at situations, not look at what's happening around us and just think this cannot be it. But let the Holy Spirit reveal Jesus to us. 
He may not do things in the way you expected, but he will do exactly what you need. Amen. Can you give praise to Jesus? Now you want to know, right? You want to know, right? So what did Simeon say? What did Simeon say? This is what he said. He speaks. He says, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. A light for revelation to the Gentiles. That's to all of us. And the glory of your people, Israel. I love when he speaks prophetically over our Savior, Jesus. He's looking at a helpless little baby. But he declares he will be a light for revelation to us. To us, church. Amen? And it said, he says like this, I can go now. I've seen the Messiah. Church, I want to declare to you, when Jesus is revealed to you, you find your life's purpose. You find what you've been looking for. And can I challenge you this Christmas, if you're still feeling like, I'm not, I, I, don't, I haven't found what I'm looking for, then come back this Christmas and look at Jesus. Because sometimes maybe we pass him by. There were so many people of a higher position in the temple that day passed by Jesus looking for something greater, looking for something else. But the Holy Spirit opened Simeon's eyes and saw, this is it right here, what you've been waiting for. Oh, church, I declare that the new year coming up, 2023, is a year more and more. We will walk in the purposes of God. We will know our Jesus clearer. We will follow him to a greater level. We find our life's meaning and purpose in Jesus. Now, please don't all pray like Simeon, okay? Please don't all pray like, Jesus, take me home, okay? Okay, okay, okay. I'm not asking for y'all go to heaven today, okay? No, stop, 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 okay? But he really felt like, okay, I can die. Life is complete right now. It's not for you, okay? Not for your time yet. But isn't it incredible? He saw even in a baby and said, this is it. I've found what I've been waiting my whole life. I want to pray that next week you will bring someone who doesn't know Jesus to church. And my prayer would be someone can leave this place next week and say, I've found what I've been looking for my whole life. That peace, that purpose, that forgiveness, that new life, that hope, what I've been looking for my whole life is in Jesus. And after he shares this, says the child's father and mother marveled at what were said about him. Do you think Mary and Joseph didn't know? Actually, they had to know, right? I mean, come on, there was, there was an angel came down and told them separately. But remember, after the angel is nine months of pregnancy. And giving birth in like a stable, in a manger, maybe you start to question. Uh, if this was really a savior, a messiah, I don't think it would go down like this. You know, she's going through the rites. She's going through, she went through the 30 days of, of feeding him and looking at him. And all he does is cry and sleep like a baby. And maybe there's times, she, is this really? Is this really? But I believe when Simeon speaks again, they're amazed. Their eyes are open in wonder once again. I pray the effects of his birth on us today. May we fall in love again with Jesus. May our eyes be enlightened by the Holy Spirit to see afresh, to be amazed and marvel again at how wonderful Jesus is. Amen. Church, will you stand with me? The effects of his birth. We can see God revealed in Jesus. He is a light, revelation to all people. 
You know, before Jesus came down, people saw a holy God, a powerful God, but a separated God. And maybe they never could have imagined what lengths he would go to, how desperate he would be to gain us, how close he could be to us. They could never have pictured Emmanuel the way that we know it now. And can you imagine that in Jesus, we see a God willing to do anything, a God willing to take on us. He was willing to be poor and weak and normal. He was willing to suffer and be cursed and be rejected. Every pain you feel, He's felt. It says in His Word that He's not a God who doesn't know what we're going through. He has gone through it all. He may not be what we were expecting, but He's exactly the perfect Savior we needed all along. And in Him we see the heart of God, the will of God, the power of God revealed in Jesus. Jesus, we thank You so much that you came the way that you came. You didn't come in the coolest way. You didn't blow open the heavens. You didn't blow trumpets. You came down to be like us. And Jesus, I pray that this Christmas, may our eyes be opened again. Holy Spirit, would you reveal, enlighten the eyes of our heart once again to fall afresh, to, to be amazed anew and marvel at you, Jesus. May we not be too busy running here and there, but may we really be affected by your birth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just take a moment and say, thank you, Jesus. We just take a moment and just say, wow. Jesus, remind me again, may I never become so accustomed to hearing this story that it falls on deaf ears, on a hardened heart. May I afresh find something again this Christmas that makes me say, wow, Jesus. Wow, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And churches, we're going to go into a time of worship. We're going to sing again the song, Living Hope. And I want us to declare again that living hope, may it rise again in us. May we start to open our eyes again, feel afresh again, what Jesus, what He has done, who He is. And do you know there's a portion of this song we were singing earlier, and I really felt that today, when Jesus is revealed, it's like chains are going to fall off some of you. You know, there is moments when we sing that like, I, I just felt like really things and burdens that you have been holding on to. You, you may even have sometimes you feel like, why isn't God speaking and doing something? And He's coming to you today and showing you that He may not be the way you imagined or expected, but He is definitely still behind the scenes working in your life. And today as we open our eyes and see Jesus, I feel hope will arise, faith arises, victory arises, and chains are going to fall off. Those chains of depression, of anxiety, those chains maybe even of addiction, something dark holding you down, falls off. Because the effects of His birth is we see God is revealed in Jesus. Oh, church, may we know Jesus. May we know Jesus. Thank you, church.